Okay, so here we've got some problems about cyclic addition reactions. The first one is which of the following will react as a diene in Diels old reactions? So if we look at A, that isn't actually a conjugated alkene or a conjugated diene, I should say. So each of the pi systems is actually separate from one another, and they're separated by that two carbon unit. So that cannot undergo a Diels old reaction because it is uh, not a conjugated diene. We have to have a conjugated diene for this reaction to take place. Now I'm going to skip over to uh, compound C. Compound C is in the S trans form and it can't adopt an S cis conformation. So that compound also can't undergo a Diels order reaction. So the two ends of the pi system are too far apart to overlap with the pi system of a dienophile. So that just leaves B and D, and these are the most common um, distractors, or one of them is the most common distractor amongst uh, questions of these types in a deals order um, question situation. So if we look at D first, what we've got is an S trans conformation. However, when we draw one conformation of a molecule, we always have to bear in mind what other conformations are possible. So for D, that compound can rotate around that single bond between the two pi systems and adopt a conformation that looks like this. Now, if we look at these double bonds, they're Z configured, and so we have to have Z configured in the S cis conformation as well. Okay, and although we can draw that, it's actually pretty horrible because we've got this large steric clash between the methyl groups within that system and so that's um, very unfavorable and therefore we wouldn't expect that diene to undergo deals order reactions because it's so hard for an adopt to ad adopt an s cis conformation so that just leaves b so let's have a look at b we've got once again a uh, diene in the S trans conformation, but this time both the double bonds are in the E configuration. So if I rotate around this bond here, we can get to the S cis conformation. And if both of those double bonds are E configured, then we're going to have that. And this molecule can react as a diene in Diels order reactions, if that's the answer. Okay, so the second question is about uh, the reactivity of dienophiles in a Diels order reaction. So if we look at each one of these, the first thing we should try and confirm is will the uh, compound actually react as a dienophile? So alkenes and alkynes can react, but in general, carbonyl groups, particularly of esters, are very stable, and so that will not react as a dienophile because we're missing an alkene, or oh, missing a pi system there. So it's very much like one of the very reactive dienophiles, which is malic anhydride, but it's missing that double bond, so it's not a dienophile. Okay, so what about the remaining three? So let's put D last. So out of the remaining ones, we've got two activating groups on A, whereas they've only got one activating group on C. So I would say that A should be more reactive than C. However, what about B? So we've got two groups on that double bond, but what do they look like? So B looks like this. Now, the groups attached to that double bond are not conjugated. There's no pi system conjugated to that double bond. So these are just alkyl groups that happen to have hydroxyl groups attached to them. And that, well, it may be inductively electron withdrawing the oxygen. It's not nearly as powerful an effect as having uh, carbonyl groups that can be conjugated to the double bond or the pi system that's undergoing reaction. So that is uh, not um, an activated dienophile. So I would put B as uh, 
the second most unreactive, or the most unreactive out of the true dienophiles. And then it comes down to A versus C. A has two activating groups, and C has one. I think that's enough of a difference between them to say that A will be more reactive than C. And so there should be, in the order, A is most reactive than C, then B, then D. There's also an added bonus with alkynes like this, that that's a very uh, sterically non-congested uh, system, and so that makes it a particularly reactive dienophile as well. But the most important thing is the two activating groups. Okay, so question number three, we've got the other side of the equation now. We've got um, which of... Okay, so question number three, we've got which will be the major product from the following Diels order reactions? Um, from the following Diels order reaction, I should say. So in this case, it's important to recognize that B has a double bond where there shouldn't be a double bond. So that we can immediately rule that one out. The remaining two have the groups um, from the dienophile component in a cis uh, relationship to one another. Whereas the starting um, compound is an E-configured double bond. And if we look at the transition state for these, then we get a smooth um, transition of the double bond geometry to a, a stereochemistry or geometry of the product. So those uh, two, C and D, can't be correct because they're uh, cis and they must come from a Z-configured double bond. So the correct major product is A, in which we've got this trans arrangement of the two groups that were attached to the dienophile. Okay, so this question is asking about two different Diels order reactions. The first is taking acrolein, this aldehyde substituted dienophile, and 1,4-dimethyl butadiene. React them together to give either A or B. So if we look at the structure of the diene, there it is there, it can interact with the dienophile with the aldehyde poking out like that. And in that arrangement, if you make a model it becomes a lot more clear, but in that arrangement this, um, this hydrogen here and that aldehyde will end up on the same side. And so this particular arrangement will lead to the trans product. Okay, now the other possibility is that we have the diene, like this again, but the aldehyde is tucked in underneath. There, like that, and it will end up on the same side as these methyl groups. Okay, so that will be leading to compound B. The first one that we looked at was the exo root or the exo product. The second is the endo. Um, <clears throat> okay, so the endo is going to be preferred and so therefore we expect compound B to be the major product of this reaction. Now, looking at the other um, reaction, compound C and D, we need to remember that we have regioselectivity in cases like this. So for the diene, we can draw resonance contributors that put electron density out on the carbon. So that carbon will be delta negative. And for the dienophile, we'll have resonance contributors that push electron density away from that beta carbon, and we'll have a, a delta positive at that end. And so we want to get that delta positive end near, or overlapping with the delta negative end of the uh, diene. So we're going to have the favorable interaction is going to be where this delta positive end interacts with the delta negative end of the diene. And then that is going to give us the uh, one four product, C. Okay, so the answer to that one is um, compounds 
B and C. Okay, the final question in this set of uh, questions about cycle addition reactions is looking at which one of these possible cases is a symmetry forbidden uh, cycle addition reaction. So it's important to bear in mind when you look at this that the most recognizable cycle addition is the diels alder reaction, which under heating gives us the um, cyclohexene uh, via a 4 plus 2 uh, process. So that's allowed under heating. That means under um, photo photochemical conditions it's not allowed. And so as we alternate the number of pi electrons we go from allowed to disallowed in each. So 2 plus 2 is going to be not allowed with heat and allowed with um, with photochemical conditions. 4 plus 2 is going to be allowed with heating but not allowed under photochemical conditions. 4 plus 4 under heat is going to be not allowed, under light is going to be allowed. 6 plus 4. So we're just looking at the total number of pi electrons in the um, in the system. So that will be allowed thermally and disallowed um, under sorry disallowed under photochemical uh, conditions. So here we have 4 plus 2 under UV. So that's going to be not allowed. This is a 4 plus 4 would normally under thermal conditions be not allowed, but under photochemical conditions is allowed. Uh, 2 plus 2 under photochemical conditions is allowed, and here we've got a 6 plus 4 um, cycle addition. Under heat, we said yes, that's allowed, and so that one is allowed as well. So the symmetry forbidden process is this one over here, A where we've got a 4 plus 2 uh, trying to be um, instigated under photochemical conditions, which is symmetry forbidden.